good to see you all in Santa Rosa. And today I want to start with just a little story. When my daughter was two and a half, I remember it was finally time for her to have some socialization aside from me and all our rescue animals and her dad, right? And so we enrolled her in the Y camp and it was just a three hour camp. It was a day camp from nine to noon, Monday through Friday. And you all, the first time that I took her to that camp and walked her in with her cute little lunch bag, right? Cooler lunch bag and her towel and her swimsuit and all that. And she just said, bye mommy. I went out to the car and I wept. I cried <laughs> huge tears because my daughter was for the first time going to be out of my sight with other people. And every piece of me that is a mother wanted to protect her even though I knew she was going to have a great time. So when we look at the divine feminine, in metaphysical circles, we usually talk about the Trinity in terms of the Father, the Son, and then the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is often referred to as female. It is the nurturer. It is the protector, it is the comforter, it is that kind of womb energy that enfolds and protects physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally. And so we think about the divine feminine as this great mother who just wants to hold us and hug us and comfort us and nurture us when we're in pain. But the truth is there's another aspect to the divine feminine. And I would call that divine ferocity, divine ferocity. Now you all, I have a very different talk written out for you, but divine spirit during the meditation said, divine ferocity is what you're gonna be talking about. And this is the part of the divine feminine that we often forget about. And we convey, for example, Mother Mary, another aspect of the divine feminine energy. We, we look at her as very demure, as very sweet, as very, uh, what should we say, protective of Jesus and kind of just in the background giving love. But the truth is, Mary was quite a thing, quite something, you all, quite something. And I want to read something that I wrote about Mary in one of my LUT um, preparation courses. And this may be hard for some of you to hear. I, if it is, well, look at that, right? And hopefully it, you'll be open to this aspect of the divine feminine. I am Mary, the mother of Jesus. You may be used to seeing me depicted this way as demure, quiet, gentle, even fragile, but let me show you who I really am. Let me take off this head wrap and invite you to walk a few miles in my sandals. Do you realize that I was just between 12 and 14 years old and engaged to Joseph? when I had the vision of Gabriel visiting me and telling me I would carry the son of God, 12 to 14 years old. Think about it. My daughter's now 14. It wasn't that unusual for girls of my age to be engaged at 12 years old, but can you imagine the faith and the strength and trust in God that it took for me to take on the task of carrying, giving birth to and raising Jesus? Can you imagine what it was like for me to sit down with Joseph after my vision and say, sweetie, we need to talk. Knowing full well that what I had to say sounded crazy and he could very well abandon me. Think about it. I was pregnant, but not with his child. 
I risked everything for this baby, the son of God. I risked being ridiculed, abandoned, socially ostracized, and even killed because I was bearing the child the prophet said was the son of God. Could you have done this all at 12 or 13 years old? I had to leave my family, my possessions, everything that I knew and travel with Joseph to Bethlehem. We traveled day and night and I rode on a donkey much of the way because I was so pregnant. It was a hard, rough, long trip and all we had was our faith to sustain us. Can you imagine how alone and afraid I felt at times wondering what would become of us? You ask me where you can find me, Mother Mary, in your modern world. Some of you call me the feminine principle of God, the nurturing feminine principle. But I assure you, I am much, much more. You can see me in the teenage unwed mother who, despite all obstacles and social disapproval, decides to keep her child and do whatever it takes to raise her. You can see me in the faces of mothers and teenagers and adult children addicted to opioids. Like me, those mothers wonder when will be the last time that they see their beloved child. You can see me in the faces of all the teachers of elementary school children who love them and care for them, worry about their welfare, and then have to let them go at the end of the school year. Those children were theirs to steward but only for a time. You can see me in the face of the victim of domestic violence who makes the terrifying decision to leave economic security and everything else behind so she can take care of her children and keep them safe. You can see me in the faces of every mother who has ever lost a child who was brutally and senselessly murdered and in the face of every mother who has lost a child to war and wakes up in sweat every night and was gunned down or blown to bits. You can see me in the face of the mother living through genocide who sees her daughter raped and killed in front of her and has to live with that image and the fact that she wasn't able to protect her for the rest of her life. I am Mary, mother of Jesus, and I am anything but demure. I am love, ferocious love, love that loves no matter what. Love that stands by you and doesn't abandon you, even when you feel like you're being crucified by the conditions of your life. I am pure grit and determination and faith that stands for good in the face of human error, in the face of sin, error thinking. I will not desert you. I will stand by you from the beginning to the end of your life. And I will carry you always in my beautiful, bold, and broken, open heart. Call on me. I am Mary, mother, defender, and unwavering supporter of your Christ consciousness and the power within you. So as we think about this other aspect of Mary, what comes to mind in our world? How are we as unity folks, or as I say sometimes unitics, how are we to embody that spirit of Mary, of the divine feminine, of loving no matter what? What do we stand for? What do we tolerate? that we know is not okay. And I remember, as I know you all heard this as well, when George Floyd was dying, he called for his mother 
over and over and over again. All of us watching. What does this mean to us? And by the way, you all, this isn't a talk just for women, because guess what? We all have the masculine divine and the masculine or the feminine divine within us. So what does it mean to us? What do we stand for in the world? How do we speak up? So I was hearing earlier as well, when one of us is enslaved, all of us are enslaved. And when one of us is freed, all of us are freed. When one of us is enslaved, all of us are enslaved. And when one of us is freed, all of us are freed. I think sometimes in unity, we have a tendency to sit back and meditate on and pray on, which is great. It makes a difference. There are studies that show that actually the level of crime goes down in areas where people are praying. There are studies of this, you all, that, the, that a bunch of people come and pray in an area and they see that the rate of crime goes down. It has been researched and proven. However, at the same time, there is a moment where we get to take a stand. We get to take a stand. And so in the context of what's coming through today for us, mother, may I? Mother, may I? What permission do we need to give ourselves to be bold, to be love in action in the world? So you all know one of the stands that I am is a stand for animals, rescue animals, and a stand for even the crazy ones, which we tend to get a lot of them <laughs> in our house. <laughs> I don't know what that says about us, but um, we, we work with the we work with the tough ones and a stand for feral animals. My daughter and I volunteer and feed feral cats. So what are you a stand for in the world? How are you that embodiment of that ferocious, loving, divine feminine that we're talking about? And I'd like you actually to use the chat for a second and put it up here. And I'm talking about not just praying, I'm talking about action today. So go ahead and pop that in there and I'll put a few more in myself. Everybody knows how to use the chat, right? All right. I see some folks typing. Environmental protections, wonderful. I love it, Liz. Absolutely. Protecting Mother Earth. Another way we can think about the Mother May I. We really haven't thought about that in the Earth, have we? We've just trespassed and, and violated so much of, of our Earth. What else? What are you a stand for? And it doesn't have to be huge out in the world. It could be that you're a stand for your grandchildren to be healthy and well-adjusted. And that's a big stand. Yes, Meg says, I stand for protecting children. Absolutely, Meg. I'm not sure of the question, but what I do is a radio show, Women's Spaces, encouraging women to see their strength and stand up. Also, Read, read the poem, I am woman, I am all women. Yeah, so that's your stand, your radio show, and giving that empowering women and giving women a voice. Christine says, I'm a stand for family and self-love. Love that, beautiful. Okay, guys, where are you? Where are the fellas here? Star says, helping others to realize their healthy potential. Beautiful, you're a stand for that. Where are our fellas here? 
replanting trees, collecting trash wherever I am. That's beautiful. Who else is a is an inveterate recycler? I'm the person that annoys people because I'm like, give me a bag, I'll take those home and recycle them when they're gonna throw them in the trash. <laughs> you know, I'm the person that annoys people that way. Philip says, I'm a stand for my community in any way I can. And absolutely, Philip, you're a stand in being on the board and keeping unity of Santa Rosa healthy and moving forward. All right, let's hear one or two more. What are you a stand for? Delivering food from a nonprofit to those enduring chronic illness. Beautiful, beautiful. Who otherwise might not be eating. Can and plastic recycling. I'm, I'm with you, Talmaj. I hope I pronounced that right. So look at all of these beautiful ways that we are embodying, embodying the divine feminine to be caretakers, to nurture others to nurture our planet, to nurture justice, to nurture safety, to nurture equality. I love it. So how can we take action? And here's where we get into the game, Mother May I, for a second. How many of you played this when you were a kid? Mother May I. You remember somebody's the mother and everybody stands up in a line and you say, mother, may I? And she tells you what you get to do. And there's certain steps that you can take. And I want us to think for a second about these steps as ways we can be active in the world in embodying the feminine principle of the Christ consciousness. So number one, the baby step. Do you all remember the baby step? It was Heel to toe, heel to toe, heel to toe, heel to toe. The tiniest little step you could make unless you had amazingly big feet, right? It was the small step. And I would say for this, that is a quick five minute action. A quick five minute action. Now that does not mean it's not important. That five minute action could be you call and leave a voicemail for Harker with a prayer on it. What a powerful, beautiful baby step that creates love and comfort in the world. So that's the baby step, a five minute action. And again, just cause it's five minutes doesn't mean it's not powerful. You might get on Facebook Live and you might share something really powerful that happened to you. That's a five minute action it impacts every single soul who sees it. And if y'all get on my Facebook, if you join with me on Facebook, oh yes, I just did say y'all, you can hear the Southerner in me. Um, I do Facebook Lives and I actually do what I call Monday Make It Happen Meditations. And those are at 10 a.m. Eastern time, which would be really early for you, but you can watch it all week, okay? And I talk about a topic and then lead a meditation. So feel free to take advantage of that. And those take me just a few minutes. But the idea is let's create love. Let's create power. Let's create positivity in the world so that we can make our vision happen. So that's the baby step number one, five minutes. Then you got the bunny rabbit. This is a hop with both feet together. That makes sense, right? And the bunny rabbit I like to think of as making your action fun, just making it fun in some way, shape or form, okay? Now that may not be possible in certain situations like offering condolences, but let's say you're looking at something that needs to get done or, or, you need to make, or a grant proposal for a nonprofit you volunteer for and you don't wanna do it. So you figure out a way to make it fun. You put on a silly hat, you wear a funny outfit, you put on funny music, whatever. You read something funny or watch a funny video on Saturday night live. And then you sit down to work on the very serious project. The bunny rabbit is finding a way to make it fun, whatever that way may be. And you all, I wish I could show you this. When I was writing my dissertation in graduate school, yes, I said gradual, 
I created a dissertation hat. It was this big A-frame cardboard hat. It was bright orange. It had glitter on it. At the top, it had yarn and a little pom-pom. And when I got too serious about what I was researching and writing about, I would put on my dissertation hat and look in the mirror, and then I would continue. It was very helpful to keep me from taking what I was doing too seriously. Because you all, guess what? This is all a game. This life, it really is a game. And by the way, none of us are going to get out of it alive. Yeah. So we might as well have fun. So there's your bunny rabbit step. I'm just imagining um, Rodney over there doing the bunny rabbit, you know, with the silly hat on or some crazy glasses, you know, or mustaches that you get from the dollar store, whatever makes you laugh. The next one is the giant step. And this is a step that is as large as you possibly can manage. Those were my favorites. I loved the giant steps. You just try to do almost a split if you can. And you go as far as you possibly can. You get closer to mother that way. Giant steps are when we really, really take a huge leap of faith. For example, one time in my life, I cleared my calendar. I didn't know why I was clearing it, but I cleared all of August. I just cleared it because that's what spirit said, clear your calendar. So I took everything off of my calendar. I put it all later. And what ended up happening is I ended up going to Peru at that time and working with girls who were ages 12 to 18, just under 18, who had been abused and teaching them, training them in Reiki as a volunteer. It was a magical trip. All sorts of things happened. I ended up on a radio show, uh, reading tarot cards in Spanish like two days after I got there. Crazy stuff, it was magical. All of it happened because I listened to spirit and cleared that calendar. Now that you all, for somebody like me who's a planner, who else is a planner? I like to plan. Like I'm very creative, but I like to plan. That was a big deal to clear out August. So that would be an example of your giant. We got three more. The policeman's walk. This one, you walk slowly forward with your arms out and your eyes closed until you're told to stop. Now, I actually don't really understand why that's called the policeman's walk, but that's the name of that particular step. But that is also about trust. That step is about trust because you can't see and you're moving forward and just trusting that somebody's going to tell you to stop before you fall into a hole, for example. The policeman's walk. That's when we trust. And the way that we know we've been successful is something external happens to, to confirm that we've listened to spirit, such as the radio show in the quick story I just told you. That's an external confirmation. Then we've got the wheelbarrow. Do you all remember this one? This is where you take your friend's feet and they put their hands on the, the ground and you hold their feet and you go that way. Uh, so your friend is holding your feet and you're walking on your hands. The wheelbarrow, think about that one. We take action with the support of someone else. We take action with the support of someone else. So for example, and, and we're able to go further that way by, by uh, actually by the way. For example, years ago on an, yet another trip to work with these girls, I had told my ex-husband, if, if, if that ticket, if that airline ticket is over $700, I will not go. That's too much, I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna go. He's like, you know, you, you should go back to Peru and do that work again. Mm. If it's over $700, I'm not going to. And he said, well, let me just give you this for your Christmas present. And I said, still, if it's over 700, I'm not going. Guess how much the ticket was, you all? Guess, $6.99 and change. I kid you not. That's a wheelbarrow right there. And my ex-husband was the one holding my legs as I plodded along because he was saying, yeah, you get to go, you're gonna go, you're gonna go back. And finally, we have the tornado twist. 
Doesn't that sound exciting? Maybe not right now with Hurricane Elsa around the South, but um, the tornado twist. And that is a combination of all the other types of steps. So maybe you do the bunny rabbit and the giant together or the bunny rabbit and the wheelbarrow. I'm not sure how that would look, but <laughs> I'm sure anything is possible. But you combine certain steps together and therefore you make progress faster. So what's the point of all this? In the game, Mother May I, you get ahead by asking for guidance. Mother, may I? You get ahead by listening to mother. And then thirdly, you get ahead by taking action on what mother tells you. Plain and simple. Right now in our world, we really need that protective, ferocious mother who will not stand by and let another human being be hurt, who will not stand by and let a human being starve needlessly, who will not stand by and let someone be out in the streets without support needlessly. We are that feminine face of God. We are it. And to finish, I'd like to read just a quick little passage from Myrtle Fillmore. It is my great joy, and this is, um, this is just a little passage from some of her writings. It is my great joy to perceive somewhat of the mother side of God, the divine love that never fails, and that is equal to the drawing of souls to itself. It is my prayer to be able to radiate the qualities of this divine love to all. You too are the mother of unity, because in your own heart, you have the same ideals and the same great generous spirit and the endless and tireless service and the love that never is the universal mother. How happy we are to represent this mother. So whatever your gender or orientation, none of that matters because truthfully, you have that mother inside of you. You have that ferocity. You have that love. And my question to end today is what kind of mother may I steps will you take in the next 24 hours to radiate that love? Thank you. And so let's just settle in and listen to spirit. What is the divine mother nudging you to be and do in the world? And we affirm that through the powerful creative spirit within you, you are open and receptive to that wisdom, to that message, and you take, take action on it with joy and power, spreading love throughout the world.